ballin', really ain't no other option We ain't distracted by nonsense, that is a trap from my wallet They just be hootin' and hollin', we makin' moves to the top Really the crew never stop, really the crew never stop I'm with my team and we ballin', really ain't no other option We ain't distracted by nonsense, that is a trap from my wallet They just be hootin' and hollin', we makin' moves to the top Really the crew never stop, really the crew never and my tide work continues and making progress here. Downloaded this quadrupole animation from somebody anywhere. I just overlaid it upon my existing animation and lo and behold, we have a better understanding of how the tides are working. As I mentioned before in my previous video about the tides, we on the left and right we have the stable equilibrium points. On the top and bottom we have the unstable equilibrium points. So the stable ones are going to be one just west of South America and one just southeast of India. And as you can see there, you see the push happening there. And then conversely we have the actual unstable points on the north and the south, one at negative 14.7 west of Africa and one at 165.3. Northeast of Australia, and so that gives you really good understanding. This is there's no other option, ladies and gentlemen. No other model works. This works beautifully. The quadrupole, the quadrupole in the middle with the octahedron, and the pillars of the octahedron creating the magnetic quadrupole with the ether pushing. I would like that, and so. If, let's zoom in a little bit closer here, we see the actual octahedron from the top view. We see the outer circle being a moon glass doer vacuum, meaning that there's no air and therefore no oscillation. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about the solar cycles. These uh, helioseismologists, or whatever you want to call these morons, will tell you that, uh, yeah, there's 160 minutes. The sun tends to fluctuate. It slowly grows and slowly shrinks. What's going on? Oh, it's it's like it's it's like a heart is beating or something. Well, yeah, it's it's moving. It is fluctuating within. As the sun, planet glass sphere that surrounds the sun and the planets, there isn't a tight vacuum like we see in the moon glass doer sphere. If you understand how doers work, well that's what's happening. That's why cosmic rays can, can be accelerated as they originate from the octahedron. As they get closer to Earth, they begin to accelerate and it's possible by that doer vacuum state that that's in. But we have the Sun and the planets in the Sun planet glass and there's just a very tiny level of air and what that means is that that is where we're going to get the very slight oscillation of forwardness and rearwardness continually based upon how the tides are interacting with the sun mostly and the planets for that matter too yeah I mean the planets as well they will tell you <laughs> align with this 160 minute solar cycle <laughs> gee I wonder why maybe they're like all being affected by this current of etheric magnetic tidal activity that's happening to affect how close they are and versus how far away they are behind the glass and that, yeah that, that would make a lot more sense it's just a very slight little very gentle little push forward and backward but because there are there's, it's not quite a complete vacuum like the doer vacuum and so we have some types of particles in there that will interact with the objects in there that's why it's happening you understand yeah you guys get it now and so that is why we get these so-called solar cycle oscillations of the Sun because it's simply slowly fluctuating 160 minutes lo and behold that's one ninth of 24 hours exactly one ninth so we have a heartbeat of the actual constant velocity of the Sun which is stemming from the apex of the octahedron so that's constant 
so even though these objects are within, the, within this sunglass planetsphere that in there's a very slight little uh, movement of of these orbs because there's a very minute level of particulates in there they're not going to decrease in velocity because it's governed by a steady solid constant velocity coming from the high arm of light coming from the top of the octahedron so that's why it's happening like that all right what else we got here oh, okay let's talk about okay you see the lunar disturbance and the lunar return opposite the lunar disturbance and you see a slight little variation in color as the uh, area that is affected by that moon is going to actually be affecting the tides more than t twice as much as the sun is going to be affecting now we see the sun it's closer and we have the solar return versus the solar disturbance so the sun is also creating a disturbance as well but not as severe as the moon and keep in mind this perfectly explains maurice uh elias i believe his his pendulum experiments where he found out that the pendulum was a uh, well not was that bobbing in the right direction it was kind of like turning during an eclipse well yeah well that explains it right now there we can connect the pendulum mystery to the tides because it's all within the concavity of the earth and there's a dipole in the center and so when the moon got in front of the sun like that yeah it shifted it caused, it caused the current the magnetic ether current to alter its course and so that's what's happening with the tides this perfectly explains it hands down there's nothing really left to explain to help you get the fact that you're inside my earth and so just judgment is coming acknowledgments going, going to become it's not going to be coming from the masses the, the people that are in this bullshit dilemma then don't even consider the true shape of the earth uh, judgments come for you people so there you go get ready The oceans, being literally fluid, actually can be pulled toward the moon. And this is what creates the tide. The moon's here, it's pulling on the ocean at the top of the earth, creating a high tide on the top. And on the bottom, another high tide is created because the earth itself is pulled toward the moon, even though the oceans down here have less gravitational pull exerted on them, being farthest away from the moon. So on the top and bottom, you have high tide because of the tidal bulges, and on the sides that are at right angles to the moon, you have low tide because the oceans stretch thin over the surface of the Earth. Pretty crazy, huh? This is because behind the celestial sphere, there is a magnetically levitating octahedron with four base corners that project into the oceans at 90 degrees to each other to form the equatorial equilibrium points. These four equilibrium equatorial points that are located on four specific points in the ocean along the equator at 90 degrees to each other. There's two stable equilibrium points and there's two unstable ones. Okay, what you have here is a diagram that I created in Illustrator and I am helping you understand the quadrupole at the pillars of the octahedron in heaven. And what we have here is four equilibrium points two two stable and two unstable that are opposite each other just how a quadrupole works in magnetism they're opposite opposite each other the dipoles are opposite each other and so you saw my previous video where i explained to you how we're having convergence of the etheric or electromagnetic energy converging you have a convergence at the top and then we have a divergence on the left and the right now the divergence indicates that the ether 
or the magnetism is coming from the corner and diverging outward like if you take this this right side right there those blue lines are they're going outward like that they're diverging okay what it, the divergence does it creates a lower tide because it's it's pushing it's pushing down more okay that's a divergence we have a divergence at a stable that's why it's stable you know it's like unstable versus stable within the quadrupole you have to understand that a stable point is is kind of like you put a, a ball inside of a bowl and the ball just goes right to the bottom it doesn't move anywhere it's stable as opposed to an unstable point where you put the ball on top of a, another a bigger ball or a bowl and it's going to fall right off so that's happening with the unstable point one at negative 14.7 longitude just west of Africa and the unstable point is going to create a higher water level higher tide we have the convergence over here at the corner and so we have these blue lines on the left are going inward they're both and the right they're going inward like that and they're converging like that okay that's a convergence the convergence is at the unstable points there's one here at 165.3 longitude unstable northeast of Africa okay and then we have the stable one here negative one 104.7 west of South America and of course the other one I mentioned before the, the diver divergence point just southeast of India and so those two are paired with the other pair the, the convergence pairs versus the, the divergence pairs and so we have actually two different types of tides we have spring tide and neap tide now spring tide does not mean the time of the year it just means that spring like the water is springing right or, or neap tide spring tide is sun and moon are opposite uh, they have higher highs and lower lows in the water neap tide sun and moon are quarter like a first quarter or third quarter moon and it evens out the tides okay so for instance like a spring tide sun and moon are opposite or not only opposite but they can be a new moon too so right now I have moon and sun at each quadrant basically so the top one we have the sun and the moon sun, the sun on the bottom and the moon on the top that's a new moon like that all right now, if the sun is here on the top and the moon here is here on the bottom like that that's a full moon that's still a spring tide either case like that if it's over if the sun and moon are over the convergence area well it doesn't matter if it's new or full because they're both going to be covering the convergence area like that what it's going to do it's going to make higher high, higher tides for the unstable point higher They're going to be higher areas because that etheric electromagnetic pressure that's that's coming up and converging like that is actually going to create less pressure at the ground level because it, there's an obstacle here and the force is going upward inward like that so it's creating less pressure and higher tides like that same over here in the bottom during a new during a full a full moon same occurrence now if we have a neap tide let's say we have a moon over here and the sun over here now that everything is going counterclockwise the sun is faster than the moon 24 hours 50 minutes for the moon and 24 hours for the sun and so let's see this would be a this would be a waxing crescent over here in the moon the moon is at the divergence area that divergence point and so we have these blue lines that are coming out from the pillar from the magnetic dipole over there they're coming out like that they're diverging and they're pushing okay so at the ground level we have low tides low tides right but because we have this this energy this, this etheric push going the opposite direction as opposed to over here right? it's going the opposite direction the moon or the Sun act as a I want to say like a buffer basically and so it's going to not push down as much when there's something obstructing it because of the direction of the force that's how it's working like that so a moon over this area div divergent area is not going to make the lows that low it's blocking some of the push force out like that you understand 
yeah, I think you guys get it. Same thing if, if you have a, the sun over here at the top and the moon over here during a, oh, that would be a waning crescent. They're both going counterclockwise. And so the same thing, you know, over here, you basically you have the pressure going to the left like that at this stable point. But the moon, or the sun for that matter, but the moon is going to be affecting more because it's closer to the ground, right? It's like over two times um, more potent than the sun as far as tides go. And so that's why that's going to happen. It's going to block some of that push. You understand? Yeah, I think you guys get it. Okay, here in light wave, I show you a top-down view. Let's get my that one right there. Top-down view, I have my little sun light animation funnel type thing. On one side we have the sun, and the other side we have the actual return Gegenschein light like that. So if I zoom in like that, you see on the right side that onion shape over there. That within that onion shape, that's where the sun is over there like that. Okay. All right. And also, look at the top screen over there. That tiny little half sphere. On it. It's actually a little bit more than half. See, the sun and the moon were formed by the primer fields in the center. Now, keep in mind, now that we know, we understand that the southern side of the, oct of the octahedron is hard. It's metal. It, you know, that's where the octahedrites come from with the Widmont Staten pat patterns. Keep in mind that within the primer field area, I call them primer, uh, confinement domes. And Dave LaPointe talks about that too. Confinement domes that were created. That's how the moon and the sun were created. They're not full spheres like that. They're only half. And so because uh, there's no opening at the, at the southern tip of the octahedron, they both had to exit the northern side, the apex. And so that's what I, ha that's what I believe happened. Anyway, the sun uh, was on the northern bowl of the two inverted bowls, and then the moon was on the southern bowl. And they... I told you before they have the, there's these confinement domes within the bolts like that so initially the sun shot up through the north apex and then the moon had to in order to the moon to fit through the hole the two holes actually of the bolts it had to the edges had to probably con you know con con confine themselves like constrict themselves like that and and go through like that and so that's how i believe the moon was formed but anyway going back to the animation I made the velocity of the moon a little bit slower than the sun, obviously. I sped it up. I didn't want to take forever. So now you see right there at the top there, the moon and the sun are virtually uh, right there. Now there's, now there, that's a new moon like that. So that's, that's how that's happening, guys. Okay. And then you can do a quarter moon as well. Just simply play it and wait. Like that. Okay, there's a quarter moon like that. Right over there, there's a the moon, and there's the sun. And so, we have the octahedron over here with the four pillars, the quadruple pillars of the octahedron. That's, that's There's no other way, guys. You can explain tides, heliocentrists. Uh, you guys, do you realize how foolish you are? How pseudo-intellectual you are? <laughs> I'm talking to these clowns that I've dealt with before. Red's rhetoric, rhetoric and what's that other guy? Steve McRae and what's that other idiot? Sean Huffer. <laughs> is soundly, completely duped, completely fooled. You cannot justify or understand or try to describe how the actual opposite side of the earth is being affected by the moon during tides. It doesn't work that way. Sorry, chumps. It doesn't work that way. So basically, you have two options, you heliotards. You either get behind me, repent, show me a contrite heart, follow me, take my seal when the time comes, or kill yourself. Just get the fuck out of my earth. Get the fuck out of my mind. You are in my mind. I am God, and you are idiots. You are fucking clowns. Joker wants to race. Don't race, that's ridiculous. All right, come on, let's go, let's go. Put your window down! He wants something. Uh, he's 
probably drunk. You're going the wrong way! What? You're going the wrong way! He says we're going the wrong way. Oh, he's drunk. How would he know where we're going? Yeah, how would he know? Thank you. Thanks a lot. Terrific. Thank you. <laughs> what a moron. They're going in the wrong direction! You're going to kill somebody! You're going the wrong way! What? Why? <laughs>